Welcome to FinFest 94 on the campus of Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois. Located just 60 miles west of Chicago, DeKalb became home to many Finns who, while on their way to Minnesota or Michigan, decided to settle here in the 1890s. The Finnish community reached its peak in the 1930s and became a vibrant part of DeKalb, building union and temperance halls, churches, and numerous businesses, including a Finnish steam bath. In addition, many Finns became involved in public service, serving as police and fire chiefs, aldermen, and even mayor. Midwest FinFest 94 is in part a tribute to the long and rich history of Finnish Americans here. And the city of DeKalb is proud to have the honor of hosting this international event. This video is a sampling of the many events, performances, and people that made FinFest 94 such an unforgettable experience. For those of you who attended, we hope this video brings back some of the pleasant memories of your time spent here in DeKalb. And for those of you who couldn't attend, we hope that this video will convey the spirit of FinFest 94 and hope that it will encourage you to attend next year's FinFest in Portland, Oregon and others in the years to come. Welcome to DeKalb, Illinois and Midwest FinFest 1994. FinFest is a festival for Finns and Finnish Americans, but it's also a festival for reaching out to the community. FinFest on American Suomalaisten juhla, mutta se on myös juhla, jolloin olemme kaikki yhdessä tekemisissä ja ja ajattelemme kaikkia läsnä olevia ja ympärillä asuvia ihmisiä. We have been especially nurtured by our president and his wife Ray and Lois Lasellius and I'd like to ask Ray to come up and say a few words of greeting to you now. Ja tässä prosessissa meitä on erityisesti tukeneet Roy ja um, Ray and Lois Lasellius ja he ovat olleet meitä innostamassa ja haluamme uh, pyytää Raytä tähän esittämään tervehdyksen. Tervetuloa kaikille. Welcome to all to Midwest FinFest USA 94. To those of you attending their first festival, through those of you attending their 12th. On behalf of FinFest USA 94, our organizing committee, I want to extend to you a warm welcome to our festival. Our theme, as Doug mentioned for this festival, is Finns Looking Forward. And our committees have put together a program that will appeal to everyone. To paraphrase the Olympic chairman at their opening ceremonies, I now declare FinFest USA 94 open. Best wishes to all of you for an enjoyable stay. Since not all of us are Finns here, and since not all of the Finns um, are all that sharp with their Finnish, I understand. Um, and we are going to have some Finnish songs tonight and some other programs during the, the festival in Finnish. Uh, we thought we might begin with a brief little Finnish lesson. Henry's going to teach me some Finnish, and I thought maybe if, if I can get the, the audience to join me, maybe I can learn a little faster. And I've heard that Finns like to dance. Is this right? I mean, is it, anybody like to dance here? <laughs> Does anybody have, do you think you might have some use for a phrase like, you know, may I have this dance or whatever they say in Finnish? Let's be a useful phrase for you. You might be asking someone other than your spouse to dance. Okay. Okay, let's try this out. Okay. It's Sankoluvan. 
Sanko? That, isn't that a bucket? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long A. Oh, oh. Sanko Luvan. Sanko. Sanko Luvan. Let's all try it. <laughs> Sanko Luvan. Hi. So let's let's put it all together now. Mina rakastan sinua koska sina olet suomalainen. Sanko Luvan. I think, very good, very good. I think this will work. Bob Selvala has um, steered FinFest USA for years, and we're glad to have him here uh, with us today. Seuraava tuo tervehdyksensä FinFest USA:n kattojärjestön puheenjohtaja Bob Selvala. It's getting better, I think. <laughs> Well, uh, Doug and Helia, everybody that knows me uh, knows that I'm a, a poor Finn as far as the speaking the language, but uh, let me tell you, I have the Finn right here in the heart, and that's what counts. Uh, President Lasanius, honored guests, visitors from Canada and Finland, fellow Finnish Americans, and all of my cousins, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming you to our 12th annual festival. I would like to officially welcome you on behalf of the National Committee of FinFest USA and enjoy these next three days. Thank you. Here to introduce our link to Finland in Washington, D.C. is the Honorary Consul of Chicago, Fred Niemi. Kunnia Consuli Fred Niemi esittelee Suomen suurlähetystön edustajan ministeri Hannu Mäntyvä. In you matter. <laughs> my all, all my grandparents came from Ostrobothnian and uh, Ostrobothnia, and my parents spoke Finnish at home whenever they didn't want us to know what was going on. And if I did learn to speak English or Finnish, it would be a very excellent 120-year-old Ostrobothnian dialect. It's great pleasure in behalf of the. Illinois and Wisconsin Finnish Americans and Finns to welcome you here. And it also gives me great pleasure to welcome this evening the representative of the Finnish government here in the United States, Hanu Mantuvara. He is Minister Hanu Mantuvara from the Embassy of Finland. Minister Mantuvara. Yeah, good evening, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. Hyvää iltaa, arvoisat Amerikan suomalaiset ja kaikki FinFestin osanottajat. Uh, I'm very pleased to greet you on behalf of the Finnish Embassy. Ambassador Baltasar is on vacation in Finland and certainly having a good time, uh, but I'm sure that he would uh, share my feelings that it is always a great joy also to attend the FinFest. On behalf of the Finnish Embassy and a representative of the Finnish government, I wish best success to FinFest USA 94 here in Midwest, and I hope that everybody will have a good time, as I believe. Paljon kiitoksia. Thank you very much.
The theme for FinFest 94 is Finns Looking Forward. Tonight's event has been inspired by our first generation forefathers who were truly looking forward with their creation of this hall and the development of a strong Finnish community here and all over the country. The first song I'm going to sing this evening is a, an old favorite of all of ours. I'm sure we've heard it many, many times. I hope that when I get through, it's still one of your favorite songs. Karyo <laughs> Kuna. <laughs>
Lady has admitted to the following. Instead of Rakkat Neuse, Raskat Neuse. <laughs> Instead of Gusi Vekua, Kusi Vekua. <laughs> Instead of Perunapu, Perunapu. <laughs> Uni justua instead of uni justua. Instead of muinais historia, munuais historia. He also once asked a groom whether he would take the bride as his other vaimo. Which means common law wife. Instead of avio vaimo. And he has confessed, olen tappanut pastori auto kaksi kertaa. Another of the Swami Senate's young pastors exhorted the congregation instead of Katsuka Taksepain, Katsuka Takatuale. <laughs> why, why do the uh, Finnish Americans observe December 7th? Uh, it's the day Pearl Mackey got bombed in two harbors. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that, that General Custer was actually Finnish? Uh, his, his dying words proved it. He says, these Sioux are killing me. <laughs> but the most common forms of Finnish American humor are what we might call jokes. They're these, these brief uh, narratives, uh, maybe a hundred words take a you know, minute or so to tell. They have some stock characters. They have um, a little bit of a plot. Uh, some sort of action dialogue, and they end in some sort of appropriate punchline. In in Finnish jokes, uh, the names are are both typical, and that they're very distinct names from uh, the names of other ethnic groups in in the Upper Midwest. And Eno and Toivo are the predominant names <laughs> in, in Finnish American jokes, as probably many of you know. Although uh, Weno, Heiki, Tauno, Erho, and Toisto also appear, and uh, yeah, Helvi or Lempi. Uh, uh, some of these other kinds of women's names appear as well. She holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree from the University of Leningrad, where she taught English before joining the University of Helsinki. During our many conversations, she shared with me the plight of her people, the Inkarilaiset, the Finnish name for the Inkari people who were scattered throughout the Soviet Union. Originally, she informed me, her people inhabited the area around Leningrad, St. Petersburg, and Eastern Estonia. Uh, this is Design Forum 94 at Midwest uh, FinFest 94. And to our left here, we have a group of chairs that were sent to us by Design Forum of Finland. There's eight chairs representing eight of their top uh, furniture designers. When we finish with them, we'll go to the Museum Antheneum in Chicago. Uh, this is Finland's new opera house, which opened in uh, October, I believe, of 1993. Our uh, next display here is uh, Ristomaki Ratia. Uh, his mother founded uh, Mary Meko. He was their chief designer. The products you see here have been designed for Crate and Barrel, which is a nationwide chain. Elin kerran hänisin ja kaiken menetin, ketään enää lähelleni tästä pelkäsin. Liian kauan kesti ennen kuin mä ymmärsin, sen sisälläni asuvan mä mitä pakenin. Jos vielä annat vierellesi tulla, vaikkei mennyttä takaisin se tuo. Jos vielä annat vierellesi tulla, silloin hukkaan ei menne päivät nuo.
year for, for the presidential election in Finland. So that, um, and, and I know that they ran out of ballots. And uh, even some of the residents at the rest home are here on, um, you know, have, have had their green cards for years and years, but then are still uh, Finnish citizens. So some of them went over to, to, uh, to use their, their right to, to vote. Yeah, interesting. Some of them had very long, unpronounceable names, and I'm going to talk about name changes uh, in a minute. But first I want to talk a little bit about names in general. The majority of Finnish surnames contain a diminutive termination, N-E-N. How many have a last name that ends in N-E-N? You know, that's very, that's very common. Don't you ever think of marrying her to whom you are betrothed, whom you wanted for your housewife? You just go on hammering, all the time clinking, clanking, in the summers shoeing horses, winters making up the horseshoes. Nights you build your basket sleigh, days you fix the sides for traveling, so that you can go off wooing to the halls of Poyola. Let me tell you, even now, slyer men are on the way, cleverer ones ahead of you. They will win your very own one, take your dear one for themselves whom you've yearned for two long years, and for three years you have courted. Right now, Vainamoinen's headed there across the wide blue sea in a boat with golden prowls.
I'm Aya Pick Reed. I'm the curator of this ju juried exhibition of contemporary art by Finns and Finnish Americans. The jurors are Joyce Koskenmäki of the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse and Mary Swanson uh, of the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, this exhibition presents a wide range of works by uh, Finns and Finnish Americans, ranging uh, from very traditional pieces to um, avant-garde works. We have uh, drawings, paintings, sculpture, mixed media, and silk screens. With the exception of uh, Duluth in 1992, there has not been a juried exhibition of art in connection with FinFest. However, the, po the positive response to this exhibit has changed that, and uh, there are plans being made to have a juried exhibition at next year's FinFest and the year after that. some of the best knives in the world. These are all handmade in Finland. We import knives with uh, 14 different knife makers. Some of them have reindeer antler. This is also reindeer antler. Forged stainless steel. These are some of the best makers in the world. Fest in DeKalb, Illinois, and one of the things that I try to do with my carvings is one of a kind, and I specialize in moose horn carvings, and each moose horn carving that I do kind of takes me into a different direction, but it's unique, detailed to what makes me happy as a carver, and hopefully uh, others will enjoy it. It's the international costume of Finland and uh, it's uh, not a regional costume like the most costumes are. This represents the whole country. Different colors represent different things. The blue represents the blue waters in Finland. The green represents the blue, the green gold of Finland, the forest. The red stripes are uh, the blood of the Finnish soldiers during the war. And these black ones over there are the dark times that every person has in their own lives. Okay, 
Naughty by na nature here is mainly is just what we call it, naughty by nature. Our products are um, the knots and the limbs of the wood. Like this one can be used as a mount for, a, for mounting a bird. Then we have canes that have been carved out of the wood just as they naturally grow. And we also have some of them that are used as a door pole. You can use it on your sauna or, or if you have a camp, you have an outhouse, you can use there. And we can use the bigger ones such as this on your garage to hang up your water hoses or extension cords, however you'd like them. And basically, that's what our products are all about, is the different knots and the different twists of the woods. ...have always been geometrically simplified. In fact, the painting sisters in the early 1880s brought naturalism and landscape back to Finland before their better known male colleagues, Axeli Galin Kalala, Albert Edelfeld, and Ero Jarenfeld. Yet even in a rather innocuous area of painting, women were criticized for their quick acceptance of a new style, then a variant of Impressionism. Helene Scherfbeck, the prolific innovator of expressionistic Finnish scenes from the 1880s, exhibited cropped impressionist views at the Arts Association in Helsinki through the 1880s. They very kindly let me stay. And I had been reading obituaries because obituaries are fascinating things and they tell you lots about human cultures. And I, I noticed that sometimes those uh, funerals would be several weeks after the deceased had, uh, had, uh, had gone away. Uh, and, uh, and I said to one of the students, why do you take so long to dispose of the dead? And he considered this for, uh, for uh, a minute or two, and, uh, and he, he said to me, well, how long do you take in America to bury the dead? And I said, well, two or three days, usually. And there was a long silence, which was very Finnish. And after a while, he spoke again. And he said, you are in a hurry to be rid of them, aren't you? <laughs> Readers know that, that you, as home gardeners, want fragrant varieties. And so what they're doing is they're adding fragrance to their breeding objective. And the reason that I wanted to show you this carnation is that this is the Monarch series, and every single one of these carnations has a wonderful fragrance. Uh, it, each one has a, a spicy fragrance, and uh, it, so obviously you would uh, want to have one of these that has a fragrance in your garden.
This loom was bought by Mrs. Ed de Haskinen in Rockland, Michigan, or Victoria Mine, in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, prior to 1917. She was then about 17 years old. Uh, she bought it before she married Julius Haskinen. Uh, she did a lot of weaving. She taught her daughter and her granddaughter how to weave on this loom. And her daughter married my uncle. Now, after Mr. Mrs. Hastenen got a little older and stopped weaving, I bought this loom from Viola, my uncle's wife, and have been using it quite often since. surrender themselves. Yes. Supposing I did surrender, what would happen then? Oh, yes. I know the way men speak. So you've got nothing better to do than jump into bed. It's always wrong, whatever one does. How can you? I didn't quite mean that. You see, this is part of a great common theme. I criticized my mother for the same weakness. She, too, was so soft and vulnerable that she just wanted to be good. I remember her as always smiling, looking up to heaven. There's something the same in you. And as I longed for discipline from my mother, a stricter love, so I need from you the So, we get to our nationalities lesson, and I am the last to go. And everyone before me has said that they're either Polish or Italian. There seem to be a lot of them in our class. So, I get up to recite my list. I am English, Serbian, Swedish, and Finnish. And out of the blue, Mark Murphy shouts, Finished with what? <laughs> and the whole class bursts out laughing. <laughs> this is when I realized that you know, not a lot of people are Finnish, and I wasn't really sure what or where it was. After that, all I wanted to be was Catholic and Italian, like <laughs> Donna Conovich, because she was the most popular girl in the class, or Susan Polizzi, whose name my dad could never pronounce, because she was Polish and Italian, and that made her really strong, and she could really beat up the boys and girls against the boys. Oh, God. Here I was, stuck, finished, and Lutheran. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, you're 
mother wouldn't marry your father in Finland. She was a weaver, traveled then town to town with you, the fatherless child, the outcast, laughed at and scorned. So when I came to you pregnant with my new young husband, you held my hand on your knee and said, Love, Love each other. In a language I never learned, Narkasaka. Before you died, you wanted to make for my mother, serve her just one cup of coffee. <coughs> So that's, I had a, bit, a, a guilt feeling about that because here's a man who was a trumpet player, a Finnish American brass player. I'm a brass player. I, I didn't make the connection. I didn't know what, I, what it was all about. So I carried this around with me. And when uh, Bill Sertila passed away a year and a half ago, I said, this is my chance to do something. So at this point, I called Jim Leary. I got the, um, the historical information from a number of different sources, and I, I, I presented a, a, a small paper in the Finnish American Press which said, tell us your stories, relate your reminiscences of uh, Bill Surya and both in the Bible of and, and uh, we'll put them all together and present it as a kind of a memorial to both of them. That lives on, in fact, in the very last verse of the con in the, in, uh, the Kalevala, before Vainamunin leaves to go to the place between the heavens and the earth. Remember, he doesn't go to heaven, he doesn't stay on earth, he goes to this place between the heavens and the earth. He leaves that kantele for the Finnish people as a symbol of their, their uh, Finnishness, as a, as a thing that forever will keep uh, them knowing that they are Finnish. So the point here is that in the, in the uh, Kalevala we have two creations the creation of a mythical kantala and the creation of the actual kantala. We have a, have a mixture of folklore and reality. Give these people credit for these sheets. Uh, they're, they're first class stuff and you'll, you'll see the, the knife sits in there deep too. You don't need any bands around it, you don't need any snaps to break or anything like that. Might be a little bit harder to get out there but the Scandinavian way to, well especially if you buy a fancy knife and uh, the way to open it, put your thumbs together and it will pop on. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about anything like that. So, these are, like I said, uh, this type of sheath. See how deep that knife sits in there? And this is easy to pull up. And uh, what makes it easy is that horse's head there. See so if you can pull yeah. it out.
when I got this strange feeling. Niin kuin minua olisi tarkkailtu, like I was being watched. Yllät. From above. <laughs> other by the hand? Yes. Have we danced no. Lapadoo holding each other by the ears? No. Hold no. oh, my ears. Okay, get closer. You want to come and join us? Oh, oh my goodness, I can't hardly walk. Let's go. Dancing in Lapadoo, Lapadoo, Lapadoo. Dancing in Lapadoo, Lapadoo.
Till one early morning Proved I was wrong You don't know what it means Till it's gone I don't grow attached to things in the past, things I don't need anymore. Old clothes and galoshes, I packed them in boxes, old pictures of long, long ago. And memories of you, I packed them up too. Memories I thought that would fade, the moment that I
there was a Presbyterian minister by the name. Now this is for real. This is not imagining. There was a Presbyterian minister by the name of Reverend Ketchum. I thought that was bad enough until I met Reverend Webb, who was a Baptist. I, I couldn't tolerate that, but then at the ministerial meeting, they tried to change my name into Reverend Hookham. <laughs> and that's when I left the Cal County and went to uh, Upper Michigan uh, to hell. <laughs> you know, the, the distance between heaven and hell is, is two miles. <laughs> I served my time in hell and now I'm in Ishpeming. <laughs> I'm in heaven. Oh, <laughs> 
Ville Ruusunen, sen salon sydämessä on olla rauhainen. Esinnä yllä myrskyssä, sen korttikuuset piirittää ja aivan sattumalta. Sen ruusun kohtasi. Something when this doesn't have articles, so it doesn't even have a uh, or any sound. So there has to be at least two sounds. And the smallest words which are are those with two vowels. Ö, what is a night? That is actually the smallest word. Just only two sounds. Nations leading magazines, including Collier's and Newsweek, the Saturday Evening Post, American Magazine, wrote story after story that began with titles like this, The Democratic Guest Man, The Soothsayer, The Magic Forecaster, The Wizard of Washington, and so forth, extolling again his abilities to really call the election in advance <clears throat> of its happening. The recipe was written to make squeaky cheese with the fresh, unpasteurized milk. And living in Milwaukee, I did not have access to any fresh milk. At least I didn't have a source. So I decided I wanted to make squeaky cheese. My husband is also 100% Finnish. And when we were married, my mother had squeaky cheese and bulla at our reception and I thought I'd like to be able to continue to make it. So with my husband's help, we adapted what I call a modern method to make squeaky cheese. walking the other way. All right. You've got a partner. Take your partner. Turn side by side and everybody face that way. Just around opposite the clock. Oh, <laughs> 
the advice given the group is said in good humor with an element of caution added. The first indication of patience is that the man, uh, patience, is that a man must wait at least four years before hitting his wife. <laughs> I doubt if all individuals in our society have proved that they can restrain themselves for even that length of time when under stress. When a stranger pays a visit, be not angry with a stranger. For a well-appointed household always has for guests provisions. And in my home, as in finished homes yet today, the coffee table was and is an important part of all celebrations, whether it's the holidays, it's a wedding, a funeral, or just a family gathering and allow people to find different ways that were comfortable to them to make connections uh, that would be of significance to them. And so, in conversations that began in 1983 between Diane Skomars McGraw, who was at that time the wife of the president of the University of Minnesota, and who was attending uh, some meetings with her husband in Kuopio, Finland, uh, Diane Skomars McGraw had a conversation with Sitka Simkonen, who was our professor at Kuopio, and on the basis of that conversation, uh, they began to start thinking about the possibility that maybe there was something that we could share. This is an exhibit of Finnish knives from uh, three and four generations ago. Uh, they were all handmade. Uh, the factories where the work was done are located, um, most of them about 200 miles north of Helsinki. Uh, this collection is uh, really very interesting. Uh, it takes some more time to see the individual work uh, demonstrated, but certainly is a joy just to have a glimpse of it.
just a long stretch. You start from here, okay? Run into that yellow sign over there. Then you look up and you see another yellow sign. Okay, you run up to that sign. You don't see it from here, but you gotta look at it from there. Everybody ready? Okay, at the sound of this cowbell, you start to race, okay? And you know it's only one time around, you come back here and go in the shoot. All right, everybody ready? Sit, go! event for him to remember in the future to keep up with these runs. So congratulations. Eric Peterson. Kerto Tauriainen is wearing a dress from Andrea that is from Karelia. It has a blue skirt and vest that is made of two-ply wool, and the skirt has red hem. The apron is striped like in many other Karelian dresses, and a ribbon also runs around the edges. The white blouse has also ribbon on the neckline. for tying the cord. The apron has lace as a decoration. Just can I see you now? <laughs> okay. And they both have a pocket, red and black pocket hanging from the waist. They wear headbands, at least one of them does, on the head, but you could also have a turkey mission that is a person suitable for young girls.
Cortez Erquila to please come forward. She's representing the 95 committee and we will make the presentation of the banner to the 95 committee. The torch is now being passed from 94 to 95. It gives me great pleasure to present 1995 with this banner and may they carry on the FinFest tradition. Fest USA, Bob Sedler. It's a hard act to follow. There's been a lot of good uh, words, uh, good people recognized uh, this 1994 committee. Uh, I've, uh, as I said earlier that I've worked with them, got to know a lot of them, uh, and I got to know them better in the last few days. How uh, laboriously they've been working, uh, not not only the two years, but in particular the last uh, uh, few days. The most important uh, ingredient for all of us is you. Uh, uh, we, we could uh, do all this work and uh, make all this preparation, but if you didn't come, what would it be for? We, we wouldn't be uh, entertaining ourselves. We, so our, our thanks to you for coming. But all I can add is, I'll see you in Portland, July 13th, 1995. Thank you. Oscar, move a little closer so that we can. Yeah, there. Okay, in the first first couple of FinFests, they started a tradition that was forgotten about in uh, FinFest uh, recently, but they had planted a tree to a, at whatever place the FinFest had been. And the significance here, we have a tree that's between the uh, fence of the pool and Sycamore Road. If you look for the birch tree, that was planted in 1936. At the base of the birch, there's a uh, plaque commemorating the landing of the Finns in Delaware, and that was planted in 1936. And the birch there is dying. This is the this is the tree we're going to plant, and uh, leave it a better place than it was when we came. So Ray, if you'll do the honors of. Don't go away hungry, more help yourself. 